Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Spirits can be friendly, curious, or mischievous, but others are just plain dark and scary. The spirits in tonight's stories are not of the Casper variety, so you may want to avoid them if you can. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like tonight's video, give it a thumbs up and comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together. This took place in 2014 in a small town in New Jersey. Before this happened, I didn't believe in ghosts. It was New Year's Eve and I was at my friend Jay's house. He always told me that his house was haunted and that all the activity happened in the attic. We decided to go up there and do a voice recording. I couldn't believe my ears when we actually caught a voice on the tape. But much to my disappointment, I accidentally deleted it off my phone. We told our mutual friend John about it, and he wanted to experience it for himself. So, another day, we all went up there together. Here's the layout of the attic. When you get to the top of the stairs, on either side there's a little alcove. Then, straight ahead, there's a window, and at the back of the attic, there's a small room that was used as the maid's chambers in the 1800s. Other than that, it's just a regular attic. It was pretty messy with things scattered all over the place. Holiday decorations, old toys, furniture, things like that. We went up there and set our cell phones to record. I put mine in the main part of the attic and John put his in the maid's room. We started asking basic questions like, Hello? Is anyone there? How old are you? And did you live here? After about 15 minutes, we called it quits. I shut off my recorder, and as John went to get his from the maid's chambers, I heard the sound of chimes. I asked Jay if he had a clock in the attic, and he said no, so I just wrote it off to my imagination. Later, when we played the recording downstairs, on the recording, after John said hello, we heard a clear, loud, shh. And then, when he asked, is anyone here, we all heard a voice say, yes. Well, we were all pretty scared, but at the same time, we wanted more. It was like a drug hearing that voice. The following week, I was talking to a girl I had a major crush on, Debbie. She didn't believe in the supernatural at all. We showed her the recording and she insisted that it was BS. Then she demanded to go into the attic to see for herself. Jay and John came up with us, but even before we turned on the recorder, Jay said he wanted to go back downstairs. He said he just didn't feel safe up there. Debbie insisted that the lights be turned off before we started recording. She said it would be creepier that way. She didn't even believe in this stuff, so we kind of thought it was a dumb request. But I had a crush on her, so her wish was my command. The lights went off, and she stood next to me near the back of the attic and started asking questions. She was being pretty sarcastic. Then she asked me, Does Jay have a clock up here? I heard some chimes. I was taken aback for a second and told her that I also heard chimes the last time we did this and that, no, he didn't have a clock up here. Then John called out from the maid's room, asking, Did you hear that? I was about to answer him, but before I could, we all heard what sounded like a child whimpering. Debbie freaked out, and she said she wanted to get out of there. So we all went down to Jay's room to listen to the recording, to see if we picked up the child's voice. But there was nothing on the recording. Well, this upset Debbie because she knew she heard that voice. So again, she wanted to go up to the attic and find out what was going on. We all went back up there, but we didn't hear anything else in the house that night. 
the next morning, I woke up to five missed calls from Jay. I called him back immediately and he answered, which wasn't like him at all. It was eight o'clock in the morning and Jay never woke up before noon. He told me I had to come to his house right away. Now, Jay has been terrified of that attic for as long as I can remember. He told me that a spirit pushed him down the stairs once when he was a kid, so he'll only go up there if someone's with him. When I arrived at his house, he told me that around 3 a.m. after we left, he kept hearing noises, as if things were being moved around up there. He wanted to go up and check, but he didn't want to go alone, so he asked me to go up with him. As I got to the top of the stairs, I started laughing because everything in the attic was clean and perfectly set up. I thought he was having me on, and I said, Dude, I thought you didn't like it up here alone, so why did you come and clean it up? But when I looked into his eyes, I could tell he hadn't done it. He looked around the attic and said, This wasn't me. I asked him if I could do another recording and he said that would be fine. I put my phone down and I asked whatever was living in the attic to throw something or hit me, do something to prove that it was the one that moved the things around. But nothing happened. I kept trying to provoke a response by moving things and walking around the attic asking questions. Yet we heard nothing. But later, when we listened to the recording downstairs, there was a sound of an old man saying, Get up. And a bit later on the tape, as I was walking around continuing to try to provoke, we heard a little girl say, Why are they doing that? When Jay and I heard that, we were pretty scared. This was a different child's voice from the one we heard the first time. We didn't know what was going on, but we really felt like we needed some answers. So I called John and told him to come by Jay's later that night, and we all went up there and did another recording again. We asked our regular questions, then went downstairs to listen. We heard the chimes again, but no voices this time. The next day, I sent the recording to my friend Pat. After listening to it, he told me to never go up in that attic again. He said the chimes were notes of the devil's triad, music that shows that you're a Satan worshiper. This piqued my interest. After the call from Pat, I went to see Jay. When I got to his house, he was on the porch smoking a cigarette, and he was holding something in his hand. I asked him what it was, and he handed it to me. It was a Bible. Jay had been renovating the basement, and he found it behind a wall. Inside it read, Presented to Rosanna Edwards on April 9, 1862. He told me to turn to a certain page. I have forgotten which page number, but on that page was a dark handprint. He said, It looks like dried blood to me. Now there's no way for me to verify that, so I still don't know to this day what it was. But I told him what Pat said about the devil worshipping, and he was scared. I told him that I would go to the county clerk and try to find out a little bit about the house's history. Before I left, though, I asked Jay to put the Bible in the attic to see if we could stir up some activity. Then I called Debbie and we went to the clerk's office together. But as far as telling us anything about why it was haunted, we really didn't find anything. We went back to Jay's that night and met John there. Jay said the house felt heavy all day, and we knew exactly what he meant. The energy of the air shifted as soon as we walked into the house. We were all scared, and none of us really wanted to go up into the attic again. Although we could hear a lot of movement up there, and we were curious, we were all too scared to go look. I do regret that, as I'm sure we would have captured something really good. We left the Bible up in the attic at Jay's request and all went home. But when I got home, I told my little brother about all the activity and he didn't believe me. So I took him over to Jay's house and he heard the noises for himself and then refused to go up to the attic after hearing them. When we were leaving, as we stepped outside, 
my brother and I both heard a baby cry. Now it was past midnight in the middle of winter, and my brother and I looked at each other, confused. We looked back at Jay and said, what was that? He looked at us just as confused and said, what was what? And my brother and I said, that baby crying. It started getting louder, and Jay just said, uh, what baby? It kept getting louder and louder, until it got so loud, I had to cover my ears. I said, you don't hear that? Jay just said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And that is when it all stopped. At that moment, Jay looked past me with a look of horror on his face. And he said, dude, your car, look at your car. I turned around and I saw a small child's handprints all over my car. I was afraid to get in after that, but I did. The entire ride home, my anxiety was through the roof. I kept thinking that if I looked in the rearview mirror, somebody would be sitting in the back seat. But no one was there. When I got home, I texted Debbie and told her what was happening and she told me that her cat hissed at her when she got home. She said her cat had never done anything like that before, but when she walked into the house, it looked at her and kept hissing. As I was trying to calm her down, the bookshelf in my room came tumbling down, and a small metal box went flying across the room, hit the wall, and broke in half. A metal box broke in half just from hitting the wall. Then Jay texted me to tell me that his house was literally shaking. He said it felt like an earthquake in there. After our three separate experiences, Jay agreed to take the Bible out of the attic. And as soon as he did, the activity stopped. When I tell people this story, I always say I wish it had a better ending. But something happened last year that tells me this may not be over yet. Three years ago, I moved to Florida. I found a job in a shop, and one day the staff were telling their own personal ghost stories. I never brought mine up, though, because when I tell people the story, I feel like they think I'm crazy. Although it all actually happened, I realize that it's sometimes hard to believe, so I don't normally tell people this story unless I know them pretty well. Anyway, they were telling their stories, and one person pointed to me and said, now that guy has a story. And I thought he was pointing to someone else, so I looked behind me. He laughed and said, no, I mean you. I said, how do you know that I have a ghost story to tell? And he said, that shadow spirit told me. You have something attached to you, you know. He then proceeded to tell me the story of Jay's house without me ever having spoken to this guy about the story before. I felt like crying. Ever since then, I've become even more interested in the paranormal. The apartment that we moved into when I was a teen is haunted. I never believed in ghosts before this. When I was 16, I woke up one night to the sound of children laughing and running around in front of my bedroom door. I was confused because it was just my mom, little brother, and me living there, and my brother hadn't brought any friends over to spend the night. But I thought it must be him and some friends. Where else would kids come from in the middle of the night? So I got up out of bed and went to quiet them down. But I found my brother alone in his room, fast asleep. Once I was back in bed, I heard the children sound starting up again, followed by a high-pitched scream of a child right outside my door. After that, I heard running water in the bathroom. It sounded like a bath was being drawn. I looked to see if the tub was running, but it wasn't. In fact, the tub was bone dry. I looked away and eerily, I could still hear the sounds of the water flowing. Turning back, I looked again in the tub and I briefly saw what looked like someone floating face down as if they had drowned. 
Then suddenly, the tub returned to normal. Nobody was in it, no water sounds, and nothing out of the ordinary. Although I was frightened, I went back to bed again. And within moments of getting back into bed, I heard the sound of children playing outside my bedroom door again. Determined to ignore it this time, I did nothing. It was then that I heard a horrible voice screaming, Get down here! My immediate thought was the voice was talking to the little girls who were playing outside my bedroom door. As I sat up in bed, I heard a loud gunshot, a girl scream, and then another gunshot. For several long moments it was quiet. Then I heard the sound of a door slamming, followed by yet another gunshot. By this time I was starting to think I had gone crazy. That is, until I heard my little brother screaming. Rushing to him, I asked him what the problem was, and he said that he heard gunshots too. Well, now I was frightened and curious. So the next day, I began to search the internet to see if anything had happened in our apartment before we moved in, and I found out that an old man had lived there. He was very abusive to his grandchildren. He had two granddaughters and a grandson. He ended up killing all three of them, and himself. He murdered his grandson by drowning him in the bathtub, and he killed his two granddaughters, then himself, with a shotgun. I've since learned to communicate with the spirits of these children, and I asked them why they haven't been able to move on, and they said that their grandfather's spirit won't let them. To make matters even worse, my little brother has been haunted in his dreams by an evil spirit. It abuses him in his sleep. I think it's the spirit of that horrible man continuing to torture children from the afterlife. My mother told me a story that what she thought was an angel visited her in her 20s. It offered her what she wanted, and she apparently asked for wisdom. Now, my mother is smart, but I wouldn't exactly call her wise. She's often very physically and emotionally abusive towards me. Since I'm the oldest, I often bore the brunt of her abuse. As a kid, I tended to be the scapegoat for whatever wasn't going well in her life. To try to make a long story short, the negative influence this woman has had on my life has been profound. So I have a very hard time believing that an angel or any well-intentioned being is going to come and offer an abusive 20-something young woman wisdom for no reason at all. But my mother is just narcissistic enough to fall for it, and she's convinced that an angel bestowed her with wisdom. Later, when she was pregnant with me, she had a sleep paralysis episode, and she claims a demon told her that her baby she was carrying, me, was nothing but an empty black hole. Why she felt the need to tell me this, I'll never know. It's not the sort of thing I'd want to burden my own child with. I have suffered from self-esteem issues and depression since childhood because of this. Now, fast forward to when I had my own sleep paralysis episode at the age of 14. At that time, I was very depressed, hanging out with a bad crowd and was abusing drugs and alcohol at the time. In my episode, I had an ominous male entity walk into my room and stand at the foot of my bed. The only thing it said was, what do you want? I responded with, who are you? I was thoroughly confused as to what this entity was doing in my room. So when I didn't tell it what I wanted, it left. Then suddenly I could move again. I'm wondering if this is the same thing that visited my mother and allegedly bestowed wisdom on her. I believe it was asking me for something sinister, like a trade-off, whatever I may have asked for in exchange for something. My grandfather was also a very narcissistic and abusive man, 
He abused his children badly. He was also a religious zealot. Is it possible that this demonic stuff started with him? Does anyone have any idea what this was? This is going to sound crazy, but I swear it happened. So, last night I was at my friend's house, and we were just hanging out with our other friends. A few hours into the night, maybe around 10.30 p.m., a short red-headed woman walked into the room and spoke with my friend for a few seconds. Then, she walked out. After she left, everyone was acting like they were high or something, but there were no drugs or alcohol around. My friend walked back to the couch and said nothing for the rest of the night. He just sat there and stared at me. The red-headed woman came back a little bit later, but this time there was another woman with her who had golden symbols painted on her face. I spoke with them both, and the red-haired lady said her name was Julia. I don't recall the other woman's name. About an hour later, everyone in the room fell fast asleep except for the two mystery ladies and myself. The women didn't notice that I was still awake at first, and they were speaking to one another. I couldn't hear what they were saying, so I asked them what was going on. When they heard my voice, they seemed startled, and they had looks of confusion on their faces. The redhead asked me how I was still awake. Then they spoke between themselves for a minute. I overheard two things. First, they were kicking around the idea that I was some sort of hero, and that's why I was still awake. And the second thing I heard, they were actually debating whether or not they should kill me. Right after they said that, they must have come to a conclusion because they both just left. But not before saying to me, we'll see you soon. Then, they literally disappeared. They just walked out the door and vanished as soon as their feet crossed the threshold. Another weird thing? My friends have no memory of any of this. They all say it was a normal night. They don't even remember falling asleep or these women being there at all. I'm not sure what's going on, but either I have two demons after me or I'm going insane. Please. I swear this is real, but nobody believes me. I told you none of these entities would be mistaken for Casper the Friendly Ghost. Personally, I don't mind spirits. A haunting can sometimes be fun, but the evil kind I can do without. Have you ever dealt with an evil or negative spirit? If you've had any experiences like that, tell me about them in the comments section. Thank you so much for listening tonight and for your continued support. You being here really means more to me than you could ever know. I look forward to spending time with you every Thursday and I hope you all feel the same way. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends.